Thank you all for listening to this quick five-minute presentation on the chest X-ray findings in COVID-19. These are current from 29th of March 2020. Let's talk a little bit about the latest guidance. We say at the moment chest X-ray is king. Yes, CT is more sensitive than chest X-ray, but it should not be used as a first-line diagnostic tool. It places a huge burden on the radiology departments. The movement of patients creates a serious infection risk for staff and other patients, and it also disrupts other services. Its use is reserved when there is a high clinical suspicion of COVID, but a normal or indeterminate serial chest x-rays and a negative PCR test. Its use is also within acute abdomens where we are scanning the chest as well to pick up incidental COVID. The British Society of Thoracic Imaging has helpfully proposed the following three questions that you should ask before requesting a CT for the diagnosis of COVID. Does the patient have a new cough or fever? Is there a lymphopenia or raised CRP? Is the chest X-ray compatible with COVID-19? If the answer is yes to all three questions, then you don't need a CT. The bottom line is that we all need to know the chest X-ray appearances of COVID now. This is true not only for those at the front line in diagnosis, but also for other specialities as COVID spreads to patients having chest X-rays for other reasons. So what does it look like? This Singapore paper published on the 27th of March in radiology looked at the symptoms and chest x-rays of 64 patients. The most common symptoms were fever, fever both mild and high, and cough. Sore throat was also quite common. We know that the biochemical parameters of lymphopenia and raised CRP should be taken into consideration on, on initial assessment, as should the chest x-ray findings. What are the chest x-ray findings? At presentation, approximately a third of patients had normal chest x-rays. Of this third, a third became abnormal in time. An important finding was that the abnormalities in COVID become most apparent 10 to 12 days after the onset of symptoms, hence the case for serial chest x-rays. Two thirds of chest x-rays on patients at presentation were abnormal. What abnormalities are we looking for? The main finding is consolidation in half of patients and ground glass opacification in a third. What are the findings of consolidation? The findings of consolidation are seen in this chest x-ray here. Here we see a patchy consolidation in a peripheral distribution. It is often more dense than ground glass opacification. It is more marginated and often with air bronchograms. There's no fluid and it's not nodular. What does ground glass opacification look like? It's different from consolidation. It's more diffuse. It's ill-defined. Here on the right, we can see it throughout the lung. On the left, it's mainly distributed in the mid and lower zones. Ground glass opacification. Peripheral and lower lobe distribution were the most common locations. Here is peripheral ground glass opacification in the lower zones bilaterally. Four days later, it becomes more consolidative in the right mid zone, much more demarcated, much more dense. It occurs more often peripherally. Here we see bilateral, peripheral, ground glass opacification. It's ill-defined, it's not particularly dense, but it is more dense than the central air spaces. And in over half of cases, the abnormalities were bilateral. 
Here is an intubated patient in an advanced case of COVID. We can see that there is ground glass opacification bilaterally. Interestingly, pleural effusions were found in only 2% of cases. If you see pleural effusions and the clinical history and blood tests don't add up, consider an alternative diagnosis. Remember, any doubts, call us. We're on the end of a phone and we are prioritising chest x-rays. Thank you.